Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Irvin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 120 total by week and month. All right, today's question sent in uh, trying to keep track of pull ups. He logs how many pull ups he does uh, every day and wants to keep a weekly total and a monthly total. Weeks always start with Monday, even if it goes into the last month. Okay, so. I imagine we'll kind of have a uh, spreadsheet, dates going down the left-hand side, uh, pull-ups to the right. Let's, uh, well, first off, weeks always start on Monday, so I could go grab the calendar on the wall, or I could just change this to a long date temporarily. Okay, so we know that that's a Tuesday. I'll undo, Control z and we want to start with 12-31-2012. Uh, uh, so this is going to be called week of, week of, and to build the weeks. I'm going to use the previous cell, plus 7. Let's copy that down. All right, there we go. Week of. All right. Uh, to figure out how many pull-ups we did during the week from 12:31 to January 6th, I'm going to use equal sum ifs, the new plural version of sum if that came along in Excel 2007. So our sum range is going to be uh, that range there, F4. Uh, first criteria range, we're going to look at all of the dates. Press F4 and see if they are greater than or equal to. So now watch this, I'm going to build this on the fly in quotes. Greater than, equal to, close quote, ampersand, the date to the left of me. Alright, see that? That's going to build a, um, a little greater than or equal to 1-1-2013. One, one, uh, this is a little frustrating. The next criteria range is the exact same one as before, but I still have to specify that, F4, comma, and this time the criteria is going to be less than, in quotes, ampersand, the date in the next row. Uh, let's see, sum ifs, 420, and totals to 420. All right, looks great. Copy that down. Good. All right, so that gives us our week up. Now, how about monthly? The monthly, so we'll do 1-1-2013. One, one, uh, this time I'm going to fill the months by right-clicking and dragging the fill handle, and we will say fill months. All right, the formula here, hey, you know what? It's the same as the formula here. We just copy it over, copy down. All right, rock and roll. Uh, this uh, month, if you don't want the dates here, let's go in. We'll do a custom number format, Control-1. And just in custom, we'll type 4 M's. 1, 2, 3, 4. Give us, there we go. All right. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Man, the sum ifs, that is an awesome function. And I'm going to use that function also. Maybe do something slightly different with the dates, but here's what I want to know. Sum ifs, right? Mr. Excel and I are both saying the new sum ifs. Well, it's been around since 2007, right? And I know lots of people have 2003 and earlier, but sum ifs does so many amazing things. It's worth getting 2007 or later one of the versions just for getting that function. So at some point, we're going to have to stop saying new, right? And just say the sum ifs function. All right, I'm going to create my upper limit and lower limit for summarizing between two dates. I'm going to create formulas for this based on whatever no, uh, date I type here. So I'm going to start with the first of the month. I'm going to use the end of the month function. Now this, in earlier versions 2003 and before, you could get this function if you added the data analysis tool pack under the tools menu. I'm going to say, hey, that's the date. Comma. Now, remember, I'm trying to figure out the first of March, and end of the month calculates the end of the month. So watch this. I'm going to say months go back one month. This will give me the end of the previous month, and now I can simply add one. Now, that's the beginning. I need the end, so now I use the end of the month for what it's for. I say there's the serial date, comma, and zero says give me the end of this month. And now I'm going to use the same beautiful formula that Mr. Excel did. Now, notice I have a first and end of the month, whereas Mr. Excel had only the first of each month. So my categories have to, the comparative operator has to be greater than or equal to the start date, because I want to include any of those dates, and less than or equal to the end date, because I have to include those also. 
All right, now what are we going to do for weeks? I'm going to do the same thing. Beginning of the week, end of the week, both inclusive. Lower and upper limit both have to be included. Well, this is Friday, right? So if I were going to take this date and subtract a number of days, how many days would I have to go backwards to get to Monday? Well, four, right? Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. That's four days. So we can use the weekday function. Now let's take a look at the weekday function. Absolutely awesome. I give it a serial number. And then look at this return type. Look at that beautiful drop down. Now remember, our goal was to subtract four from a Friday. And look at this. If we use three, Monday is zero. Uh, Tuesday is one. Two, three, four would be Friday all the way till six is Sunday. Absolutely beautiful. Exactly what we want here. And if you, I just have some dates here, right? Just to show you. And there it is. When we get to Friday, we subtract the actual serial date, take subtract from it the weekday result for absolutely what we want. So ready equals. comma 3. Look at that. And that'll always give us a Monday. So whatever we type in here, this will change, this will change. Now this, I'm going to add 6. Now I want to copy this down, but the problem for the way I'm attempting to do this, right, have any date here, the month, and all, all the weeks, is sometimes we might get 5, 4, or 6, right? So I need to, to do something here, because I could just go like this, add 7 and then copy this down. For this particular month, I'll get one too many. For September if I of this year, that would work, right? Because I need, if I'm going back to the previous Monday, I'm going to have six weeks. Control Z. So I'm going to change this right here and add an if. I'm going to say if the month, and the month will give me a number from 1 to 12. If the month of this plus 7, right? So I want to know if that date plus 7, the month of that, is equal to the month of this, a locked F4. If that's true, then I'm running that right there. Otherwise, let's show a null text string, double quote, double quote. And so that will turn that off if I change this to 9. It'll work just fine. Control Z. I'm going to have to do something similar right here. Equals if this equals, and I've already established that there's going to be a null text string. So I was going to say if it's a null text string, then please show another <laughs> null text string. Otherwise, run that. And lo and behold, I already have the sum if out here. It's that same exact formula, just like Mr. Excel did. Take it here and copy it here, because we have lower and upper limits in our in this formula here. They're both included. If you were in earlier versions uh, and you didn't have sum ifs, you could use sum product, the absolutely awesome sum product. All right, throw it back over to Mr. Excel. Hey, all right, Mike Boy, EO month. I love that the weekday function. Pretty slick. Hey, as uh, I was thinking about this, you know, if he's going to be entering new data as he goes along, um, those formulas that I wrote are going to have to be adjusted. Uh, it might make sense to Control T and make this into a table here, and then uh, so let's check this out. This formula is currently going through row 90. Let's go down to the bottom and we'll add some more dates. Let's grab the fill handle and drag, uh, and we'll do a thousand each day just to make sure that it's really going up, and come back up, and you see that our formulas now are automatically extending. I guess that's a critical piece if he's going to be entering more pull-up data each day. All right, well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel, and Excel is fun.